السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مدل له وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله in my bad. Last week, we spoke to the signs of the hour and what exactly that means. We spoke to the fact that the signs of the hour are divided into categories, and there are both minor signs and major signs of the hour. We spoke to the fact that of the first of the major signs of the hour is the Dajjal, who is referred to as the Antichrist or the, the false messiah. And the Dajjal, as we discussed, there will be no greater fitna, no greater trial that humanity will experience in this life greater than that of the Dajjal. There will be no place on the face of the earth except that he will reach there with his trepidation testing the faith of the people, even to the extent that there will be peoples of Islam, Muslims, who will leave the faith of Islam and begin believing in him. The only two places on the face of the earth that may be secure from him are Mecca and Medina. 
and even being there may not necessarily be safety for all. Because also from what will occur is that during this time of his, there will be some form of a quaking, how it is and to what extent only Allah knows. But this quaking will cause all of the munafiqeen, all of the hypocrites to exit from these sacred lands. And then they will not be safe from the Dajjal either. The Dajjal in his trial is something that occurs toward the end of time. But there is an extinction, an extinction to his trial. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has mentioned إِنَّهُ سَيَكُونُ فِي أُمَّتِي فَرَاثُونَ كَذَّابُونَ Certainly, there will be amongst my civilization, amongst my ummah, 30 liars. In another narration, he mentions, Dajjalun kathabun. There will be 30 liars who are Dajjals. So there's the major Dajjal. And there are 30 minor Dajjals that will exist before he emerges. Another narration, another narration it mentions Kareemin Farafin, that it'll be close to 30 or so. So this isn't necessarily an exact number. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continues in his dates, Kulluhum yaz'amu innuhu nabi. Each one of them will claim to be a prophet. وَأَنَا خَاتُمُ النَّبِيِّينَ لَا نَبِيَّ بَعْدِي However, I am the seal of the prophets, and there is no prophet after me. So a person claiming prophethood, this is something that we've experienced before. As for who exactly the 30 minor the jazz are, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knows better what he intended by that. Allah knows better who exactly they are. But there are individuals throughout time that have fit the description though. In fact, if we think hard enough, we can think to the last hundred years in this country and think of a couple of individuals that might fit that bill. Into the curious case of Ibn Sayyad. Ibn Sayyad, his name is Saf Ibn Sayyad. It is said that maybe he has the name Sayyad because his father may have been a fisherman because that's what the word Sayyad means. He's an individual that he came from a, uh, a Jewish background and a Jewish family. He lived during the time of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quite peculiar about him not even at the age of adolescence, not even a teenager. Just before he was a teenager, he started claiming prophethood for himself. Whilst the messenger of Allah وسلم, was alive. And uh, word about this spread and he had some strange things going on with him that people couldn't explain. To the extent that Umar ibn al-Khattab 
may not be pleased with him, he was of the mind that he might be the Dajjal. To some of the companions, it was, it was that bad. So, of course, this reaches the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He goes to Ibn Sayyad. And he says to him, won't you bear witness that I am the messenger of Allah? Ibn Sayyad responded to him and said, well, I bear witness that you are the messenger to the illiterate. Barely a teenager talking like this. And of course, what he meant by that was, no, I am a prophet and the messenger of Allah, not you. That's what he meant by that. We'll give you some examples of why people started thinking these things about him and why his case was so curious. It was said about him, and we're speaking to accounts of the companions and kind of what they witnessed. It was said about him that he had the biological ability to see from behind him when he's looking forward. They would say about him that... Uh, his eyes go to sleep, but his heart remains awake. They would even claim that he had the ability to read the minds of others. You say like what? Well, on another occasion, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had come to Ibn Sayyad, of course, hearing the commotion and the things that are being said about him and the weird things that are happening around him. And he says to him, tell me what it is that I have concealed from you. Meaning, tell me what is in my mind. And interestingly, this was just at the onset of the revelation of Surah to dukhan Ibn Sayyad, he responded to the question of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is it that I'm concealing from you? He said, duh, duh. He couldn't grab the whole thing, but he grabbed some. So as you would imagine, this weirded out the companions. And it was to the extent that Umar ibn al-Khattab, he sought permission from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa to kill him. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa responded to him and he, he told him, he said, uh, what you're thinking about this child, meaning who you think he is, because in their mind, they think that he might have been in jail. If he is who you think he is, you're not going to be able to kill him anyway. And if he's he is, then killing him won't bring about any benefit. You see, Ibn Sayyad, he was an individual who was involved with magic. He was an individual who was involved with what we would call black magic. Not the, uh, the sleight of hand stuff, the illusion stuff, the smoke and mirror stuff, precedentation, not that stuff. We're talking about... Uh, making contracts with the jinn relative to your soul so that they cooperate and do stuff for you. That, that kind of magic, the real stuff. And in their assistance to him, it appeared 
that he had the ability to do certain things that he shouldn't have the ability to do. We say this to say that from time to time, we may hear about or come across individuals who claim knowledge of the unseen. We may come across and hear about individuals who may claim to be fortune tellers or claim to be psychics or even claim prophethood or build some type of cult following around them or people that get involved in magic and such. But this, this is not something that should sway us away from the certainty of our faith because our, our faith has provided us enough detail to recognize what is truth, what is truly from Allah, and what is from other than Allah, and what is from the shayateen, and what is from the devils. So I say these words of mine, and I see forgiveness for myself as well as for you all. So seek his forgiveness. Certainly is all forgiving, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi wahda was salatu was salam ala man la nabiya ba'da imma ba'd While it is in fact the case that there are minor dajjals minor false messiahs that may emerge while it is true that all of them are liars we also have to be aware that who these individuals actually are in reality with Allah is actually from the matters of the unseen. And whilst we can be cautious of it, be aware of it, we also have to be weary of applying titles to people who may not deserve those titles. You see, the, door, the story of Ibn Sayyad, it continues. That was on this half of his life. When he becomes an adult and enters into adulthood, and we don't have a precise time for this, perhaps during the end of the life of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or not too long after the passing of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Saf ibn Sayyad embraces Islam. This individual that some of the Sahaba thought he might have been the Dajjal, he became Muslim. Change his name. Don't call me ibn Sayyad anymore. My name is now Abdullah ibn Sa'id. And some of the Sahaba, the companions, they had they had trouble digesting this. He's Muslim now. Abdullah bin Umar was still saying, no, he's the one, it's him. Ibn Sayyid caught wind of this and he would say back to Abdullah bin Umar, I'm not him. I'm not him. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri May Allah be pleased with him. He mentioned on an occasion, he said, uh, Ibn Sayyid, because they still called him, Ibn Sayyid said something to me that made me feel shameful. He said to me, I can excuse you what is wrong with you all that you all can call me the Dajjal did not the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say that he would be of 
a Jewish, he, he, that he will be a Jewish person and I'm a Muslim. Did he not describe him and say that he would not have children and I have children? And he went on and he went on. Making these comparisons showing that even if you look at Revelation and look at the description, it can't be me. I can't fit it. I can't fit that description in. This weighed on him to such an extent. And you'll find this in a Sahih Muslim and such. That he entered into a state of depression. Because he's Muslim now and he's worshiping Allah and people are like, Weary from being around him, they're weirded out by him, and he's, he's isolated, and he went to a depression. He said about himself, he didn't do it. He said about himself that uh, perhaps I'll get a rope and tie myself and hang myself from a tree and commit suicide because of what the people keep saying about me. The words have impact, you know, especially when you keep saying those words over and over again. And um, his case, as curious as it was in his adolescence and in his adulthood, even the way his life ended, curious as well. There was a particular battle that occurred called the Battle of Harra. It occurs during the, uh, the Khilaf of the Caliphate of Yazid I. And there's an onslaught upon Medina. And in the, the midst of this particular battle, Ibn Usayyad just disappears. And he is never heard from ever again. So we offer this so that we can contemplate upon the signs of the hour, both major and minor. We offer this so that we can be aware of the Dajjal and his trial. And we also offer this to understand that we are still humans having a human experience. And just because a certain description may or may not fit does not always give us the right. In fact, it may never give us the right to disrupt the spiritual journey of another individual. Thank you.